do you choose life or do you choose destruction? Do you have the patience to have the dragonfly perspective? Do you desire to see from the 360 degrees or just 33? Surf the wave, man. Take the surf the wave challenge. What it do, man? Shabbat. Shabbat up. We back, man. You know we in the ether every night. Don't act like you don't know where we been. You know where to find us. You know where we dropping it at. You know what I mean? 432drop.com, man. Get at CJ Battle, crystaljamesjewelry.com. So you can get this copper wire. See this copper wire right there? Sparking up your frequency. I had to find this copper chain myself, man. It's hard to find a copper chain. These are actually two bracelets with a leather strap, man. That's how hard it is to find a copper chain. With the copper wire, CJ Battle got to drop. CrystalJamesJewelry.com. Keep supporting Aqua V. Click that go for me. Let go. Keep that water flowing for the stews. Let go. We tribed up. We vibed up. It starts within you. Your rest, your separation starts right here. Your real spill, your reality starts right inside of you. So let's flow with it, man. We back in Moses. King of Kush for 40 years. Serves in a dungeon. Thrown in a dungeon for 10 years. Nobody checks on him. But his wife, he's a poor. Then he gets out, connects to Aaron. Aaron's like, man, who's this support? You know what I mean? She, she ain't really part of our tribe like that. And then the Most High let him know, man, support. Got the countenance. Got the energy of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah. Let's go, man. We are in chapter 81 in the Etzibul. And we picking it up, man. He's coming to free the people. Now, how many people done bounced? How many people done left too early? How many people done did they own that? And what happened to the tribes of Ephraim when they left too early? They were smoted down. How hard was it to wait for Moses when he's the king of Cush for 40 years? He's down there at late 60, 70 years old when he's freeing the people. So what did they think of what did they think of Moshe during that 40 years when they're in captivity and he's the king of Cush? But the Most High was raising them up, was blessing them with Cush. Was fighting wars, he was fighting wars, knights and swords, getting it in. So now we understand that there's a purpose and there's a flow. The Most High had to raise up this King Moshe to do his work. And he wasn't ready till he was 70 years old. And the people weren't ready. And the land wasn't ready. And the time wasn't right. But now we know we're getting to a certain time, a certain flow. Man, you know, get back in this Jasher, man. You know what I mean? This Jasher got so much... Uh, I mean, pertinent drop, man. I mean, even the fact that Moses was thrown in the dungeon for 10 years by Rhett Ruel, Zipporah's pops, and you thinking that he's gonna come hook Moses up for helping out with the daughters and all this stuff at the well. Nah, man, he was thrown into the dungeon. Ah, oh, man, here's that part. Go right quick to Moshe, uh, Jashir, Hawashar, 78. In verse 7. And in those days, Moshe, the son of Amram and Midian, took Zipporah, the daughter of Reuel, the Midianite, for a woman. And Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. She wasn't a daughter of Jacob, but she walked in the ways of a daughter of Jacob. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah. So she wasn't Jacob, but she walked in the ways of Jacob, and thus her righteousness was nothing short than that of Sarah. So don't be so quick to try to jump on somebody because you don't think they're you. Well, then maybe you need to be you. Maybe you need to be you enough because other folks is learning even without watching you, how to walk in the ways of the Most High. The Most High is going to teach all the people how to walk in the ways. Any, anyone with the righteousness to flow 
with this earth transition is going to learn the ways of the Most High. Whether you're the tribe of Jacob, whether you're the tribe of Ephraim, whether you're the tribe of, of the Midianites, right? whether you're a Midianite, you're going to learn the ways of the Most High. It's get down and lay down. Now you, Israel, you, you, Yashara, I'm talking about the copper colored nugget. You're supposed to be lighting the way. You're supposed to be crystallizing, man. You're supposed to be crystallizing the whole earth so that they learn to walk in the ways of Hawa instead of fighting each other, you know what I'm saying, trying to call somebody out for not being Israel or, or not being Jacob. You need to be Jacob. You need to crystallize so that they all know whether you call them a beast, whether you call them a heathen, even that heathen can choose up. Either, even that heathen can learn to walk in the ways of the Most High. Now, it doesn't happen very often, keeping it real. I mean, I don't, I don't know no time in history where a whole tribe of heathens done shows up and they ain't heathen no more. But maybe there's one or two that come out of here and come out of here that may learn to walk. So what you got to do is crystallize. The more you crystallize, worry about yourselves, man. Tribe up. Others will follow. Others will learn to walk in the ways of the Most High. They ain't got to get down with you. Ain't nobody got to get down with you. They need to get down with the Creator. You need to show them how to get down with the Creator. So how did Moshe show the people, man? Let's go. Let's take it to 81. We right there. Let me finish that out, man. And Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah. Reb Ribka, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Rachel, and Leah. How is it possible? She's not an Israelite drop. <laughs> Zipporah is not an Israelite, but she's the only one that held down Moshe. No Israelites checked on Moshe for 10 years. He's in a dungeon and you crying to be free. I'm just saying adjust your perspective and know when we talk energy, frequency, and vibration, you need a dragonfly perspective because you don't know who is what and who is who when you talk about energy, frequency, and vibration. You can't put a title on it. You can't put a name on it. It's a vibration. And when she walks in the ways of Jacob, she's choosing up. She's choosing a vibration. Now, you can go you know, analyze her, look at her hair, look at her this, 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 and say, well, you're this and you're that. But the Most High is saying, that Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. And she was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel and Leah. And, and Zipporah conceived and bore a son, and they called him Gershon. He said, I was a stranger in a foreign land. And then, you know, we went to the circumcision, you know what I mean? And then he had to get the circumcision later and all that stuff. So, look, man. You know what I'm saying? We choosing up, we vibing up, and we tribing up. And we taking a step back to adjust our reality, to kill off all that animosity. You shouldn't be walking around hating your brothers or hating any others because you're feeling like this and you're feeling like that. If you hate anything else, man, you're hating yourself. Get that out your heart. Crystallize. Lead the way. Know that your vibration is going to, you know what I'm saying, lead you to the cross. It's going to lead you right to the target, man. It's all about hitting the target. It's all about hitting the target. Every time you get confused, step back and say, what's the target? Hit the target. What's your target today? What's your target this week? You know what I mean? Surf the wave challenge, man. Keep going back and flowing with the water. It's not just one wave. It's the entire ocean that you're connected to. So you gotta keep going back and get more water bringing more water to that shore, man. Keep going back. Be a part of a whole new wave. Hawabunga, yeah. it's a whole new wave, man. You gotta be a part of a whole new wave. Keep the waves coming in, man. All the waves are connected. It's not just one wave, all right? If you surf the wave on YouTube from 2015 and, and all that stuff, 2018 ain't the same wave as 2015. 
You know what I mean? I didn't even think we'd still be here. You know, they damn near kicked us out. You know what I mean? We coming back to make our own dismount. We've been fighting a good fight, man, just to get the information out. So the next wave might not be a YouTube wave. or It, it, it might be an IG. It might be an Instagram wave. It might be, you know what I'm saying, something else, man. But however the Most High uses all of this stuff, man, we're surfing the wave. We're going to be on that mug. We're going to be Hawabunga, baby. We're going to stay... You know what I mean? On that water until we become water. Surf the wave until you are the wave. Because you are the healing dew. You are the wave. Let's get it. Jashir 81. Wow, wow. It's a beautiful day, man. Beautiful day in L.A. Let's get it. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramkek to Kakok. C -c coat about 600,000 men on foot besides the little ones and their women 600,000 all right let's go also a mixed multitude went with them again it's a mixed multitude now when we talk about Prester John uh, the emperor of the Abyssinians the etymology of Abyssinia literally means mixed right so you have not just a white thing but it's the, you know you got the Midianites, you got the this, you got the that, you got the tribes of Jethro, you got the tribes of Moses that were Levites, but they were a mixed multitude. I mean, you got the nomadic tribe, you got different things. So a mixed multitude went with them. Who was pressed to John? Let's go. And flocks and herds and even much cattle and the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim in hard labor was 210 years. So in the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in the land of Egypt in hard labor was 210 years. <laughs> All right, so you got the 400 years, but 210 years was in hard labor, according to the book of Jasher. All right? And at the end of 210 years, Hawab brought forth the children of Israel from Mitzrayim with a strong hand. And the children of Israel traveled with from Mitzrayim and from Goshen and from Ramkek and encamped at Kakot on the 15th day of the first month. <coughs> and, and, uh, and uh, Mitzrayim buried all the firstborn whom Hawab had smitten. And all the Mitzrayim buried their slain for three days. And the children of Israel traveled from Kakot and encamped in Ethom at the end of the wilderness. And on the third day after the Mitzrayim had buried their firstborn, many men rose up from Mitzrayim and went after Israel to make them return to Egypt. For they repented that they had sent Israel away for their servitude. And one man said to his neighbor, Surely Moshe and Aaron spoke to Pharaoh, saying, We will go three days journey in the wilderness and sacrifice to Hawah. Now therefore let us rise up in the morning and cause them to return. And it shall be that if they return with us to Mizraim to their masters, then shall we know that there is that there is faith in them. But if they will not return, then will we fight with them and make them come back with great power and a strong hand. And all the nobles of the Pharaoh rose up in the morning and went, and with them about 700,000 men, and they went forth from Mitzrayim on, th on that day and came to that place where the children of Israel were. And all the Mitzrayim saw, and behold, Moshe and Aaron, and all the children of Israel were sitting before Pihah, Kiroth, Pihah, Kiroth, eating and drinking and celebrating the feast of Hawah. And all the Mitzrayim, the Egyptians said to the children of Israel, surely you said we will go a journey for three days in the wilderness and sacrifice to our creator and return. Now therefore this day makes five days since you went. Why do you not repent to your masters? And Moshe and Aaron answered them, so they came to check them right. They came to G check them right quick. Moshe and Aaron answered them, saying, 
Because Hawa has testified in us, saying you shall no more return to Mitzrayim, but we will betake ourselves to a land flowing with milk and honey, as Hawa had sworn to our ancestors to give us to eat, to give us. And when the nobles of Mitzrayim saw that the children of Israel did not hearken to them to return to Mitzrayim, they girded themselves to fight with Israel, and Hawa strengthened the hearts of the children of Israel over the Mitzrayim, that they gave them a severe beating, and the battle was sore on the, on the Egyptians. So they got, they came in to jeep check, you know what I mean? And they got Sparta time, you know what I mean? They, they got that Sparta time, man. They gave them a severe beating, and the battle was sore upon the Mitzrayim. And all the Mitzrayim fled from before the children of Israel. For many of them perished. For many of them perished by the hand of Israel. And the nobles of the Pharaoh went to Mitzrayim and told Pharaoh, saying, The children of Israel have fled and will no more return to Mitzrayim. And in this manner did Moshe and Aaron speak to us. And Pharaoh heard this thing in his heart. And the hearts of all his subjects were turned against Israel, and they repented that they had sent Israel. And all of Mitzrayim advised Pharaoh to pursue the children of Israel to make them come back to their burdens. And they said, Each man to his brother, What is this which we have done, that we have sent Israel from our servitude? That's how they're acting about the copper color naga right now. Because they're going to be like, Oh man, without them. Without them to build our kingdom, what are we going to do? Without our servants, what are we going to do? Well, we're not your servants. We served our time. We serve for what? Let's go. We are prisoners of war no more. Naga, stand up. Let go. Kwan, rise up. And Hawa strengthened the hearts of all the Mitzrayim to pursue Israel. Because Hawa was trying to set them up. Let's go. For Hawa desired to overthrow Mitzrayim in the Red Sea. He's trying to set them up for the oath. And Pharaoh rose up and harnessed his chariot. And he ordered all the Mitzrayim to assemble. Not one man was left excepting the little ones and the women. And all the Mitzrayim went forth from Pharaoh to pursue the children of Israel. And the camp of Mitzrayim was an exceedingly large and heavy camp, about 10 hundred thousand men. 10 hundred thousand. What's that, 10 million? <laughs> Let's go. Or one million. And that whole of the camp went and pursued the children of Israel to bring them back to Mitzrayim, and they reached them and camped by the Red Sea. And remember the Red Sea, you also have maps from California, and then you got the Red Sea in between Nevada and California, so... You know what I mean? Let's go, let's go. Like you wonder where all these dams are for, you know, you put all these dams up to dry all these oceans and seas out. But what would it look like without the dams, man? What would California look like? What would America look like? What are all these damn dams? To love to AD, the truth seeker, man. Always surfing the way. And the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and beheld all the Mitzrayim pursuing them. And the children of Israel were greatly terrified at them. And the children of Israel cried to Hawa on account of Mitzrayim, the children of Israel divided themselves into four divisions and they were divided in their opinions for they were afraid of the Mitzrayim. And Moshe spoke to each of them. The first division was the children of Reuben, Simon, and Issachar, and they resolved to cast themselves into the sea for they were exceedingly afraid of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said to them, fear not, stand still and see the Savior, see the saving of Hawa, which he will affect this day for you. The second division was the children of Zebulon, Benjamin, and Naphtali, and they resolved to go back to Egypt. So some wanted to just go into the ocean or, you know, maybe sail across the ocean. Some wanted to go back to Egypt. 
The second division was the children of Zebulon, Benjamin, and Naphtali. They wanted to go back to Egypt. Moshe said to them, Fear not, as you have seen the Egyptians this day, so shall you see them no more forever. The third division was the children of Judah, Joseph, and they resolved to go meet the Mitzrayim to fight with them. So you see the different energies, the different vibrations. <laughs> it's just, you know what I mean? So you had the, uh, you had the first division. So Reuben, Simon, and, and uh, Issachar, they said, man, they wanted to cast themselves into the sea. So I guess that means they just want to kill themselves. Like, man, we, we out of here, man. We ain't gonna face this, man. You know, surfing the wave. And then you had Zebulon, Benjamin, and Naphtali. All right, they, they just wanted to go back to Egypt as slaves. This is why I like this book of Jashar, man. Out this at Safar, man. You know what I mean? This is it's an interesting perspective. So three of the tribes, Want to cast himself into the sea. Three tribes, they just want to go back as slaves. All right, let's go. All right, and then you had Judah, Joseph, Judah and Joseph, they wanted to go scrap. They said, man, I ain't going to go, I ain't going to go be a slave, but we can damn show scrap, scrap it out. And Moshe said to them, stand in your places, for Hawa will fight for you. So you got our brothers and sisters today be like, man, just take it to the streets, man. You know what I mean? Just, just die in the streets. Fight the tanks. The tanks are coming. Go fight the tanks. I got, you know, Moshe said, I'll fight for you. Go separate yourselves. Cry out into your trees, your mountains. Go return to nature. Go be an Indian again. Copper color Naga. Go be a Naga again. I got you. Your, your dragoons got you. Every Naga got a dragon. Every Naga got a dragon. Where's your dragon? Where's your dragon? Let's go. <laughs> you think this is play play? How you think you fought your wars before? Dragon riders, let's go, Naga. Let go. Love to your honor to Hebrew Prince for kicking that Naga drop. Go surf the wave, man. Every Monday, 6 o'clock Pacific, your honor to Hebrew Prince. Caramayo comes in 7 o'clock after that. Just go click on the lineup, man. It's a beautiful thing. Let's get it. I mean, we in the ether, man. See here, like, you don't know when we're going to drop videos, but over there, you know when we drop it. Mondays, Tuesday, you know what the Tuesday lineup is. Wednesday lineup. You know Friday is going down with the Torah-only sessions. Thai Battle Poetry Hour at 6 Pacific. Hiram Art. 8 o'clock hitting you over the head. He's on log number 14 now. Working on log number 14 of hitting you over the head with Caesar's Messiah. Letting you know the difference between illusion and reality. He's slicing and dicing, man. This is Hijack Slayer Radio. You better copper up. You better eat the up. Let's get it. CrystalJamesJewelry.com Support Aqua V. <clears throat> Let's go. So, all right, man. So, Simon, Reuben, and, and Yitzhakar said, man, we're going to cast ourselves into the sea. Zebulon, Benjamin, and Naphtali, they wanted to go back to Egypt and be slaves. Judah and Joseph wanted to go scrap. And Moshe said to them, stand in your place, for Hawa will fight for you, and you shall remain silent. And the fourth division, which was the children of Levi, Gad, and Asher, they resolved to go into the midst of, of Egypt to confound them, all right, to confound them, <laughs> to confuse them. <laughs> and Moshe said to them, remain in your stations, fear not, only call unto Hawa, that he may save you out of their hands. After this, Moses rose up from amidst the people, and he prayed to Hawa and said, Hawa of the whole earth, save now your people whom you did bring forth from Egypt, and let not the Egyptians boast that power and might are theirs. So Hawa said to Moshe, Why do you cry unto me? Speak to the children of Israel, that they may proceed. 
Don't 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 holler at me. Talk to the child. Talk to the people. Talk to the children. Tell them to go. Let go. What you talking to me for? Tell the children let go. You know what time it is. Why do you cry unto me? Verse thirty six. Speak to the children of Israel that they may proceed and do. You stretch out your rod upon the sea and divide it, man. Stretch out your crystal staff. Remember the crystal sapphire staff that was planted in the garden of Jethro? Get that crystal staff and let go. And Moshe did so, and he lifted up his rod upon the sea and divided it. And the waters of the sea were divided into 12 parts. What? Come on, man. Come on, man, I can't make this shit up. The waters were divided into 12 parts. Oh, you, come on, man. How come y'all didn't tell me that the waters were divided into 12 parts? And if you knew this already, all right, that's what's so dope about this read, man. I'm, 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 I'm into this Jasher drop. So the waters were divided into 12 parts, man. Meditate on that, man. Right, let's go. So Moshe did so, and he lifted up his rod upon the sea and divided it, and the waters of the sea were divided into twelve parts. And the children of Israel passed through on foot with shoes, as a man would pass through a prepared road. Prepared roads. So the roads were already prepared and divided into twelve roads. What's the importance of the separation? How come they all... Didn't just do it Prince of Egypt style. How come they all just didn't walk together? Why were they still divided into tribes even when they were passing over the water? Under the water, through the water. Like prepared roads. Why were these 12 roads prepared for them? What's the importance of separating each lock? Don't ever get you know caught up in the separation spell or fear spell, you know what I mean? You tribe up, it's all vibration. That don't mean that you're rooting against the next guy. I got nothing against nobody. You, you tried up with us. You tried up with your homies. You tried up with your homies in Nebraska. You tried up with your homies in Maryland. Tribe up. That's Drive Nation as far as we see it. You know what I'm saying? That's the perspective. The drop is you. You are the purified substance. If you got the substance, you got the drop. And you are a nation of drop. You are a nation of purity. You are a nation of the healing do. The healing drop. The healing do. When we represent drop nation, we're representing the healing. So if you are a nation of healing, you drop nation. It's nothing to sign up for to, to say, hey, this is what it is. You can go subscribe on the site, and we got your emails, so you we make sure you got your passwords, but that don't make you drop nation no more or less, man. You drop nation because you were born this way. You drop nation because you are the healing due of the entire earth. Let's go. Let's get it. And Moshe, Moshe did so, and he lifted up his rod upon the sea and divided it, and the waters of the sea were divided into twelve parts. And the children of Israel passed through on foot with shoes, as a man would pass through a prepared road. And Hawah manifested to the children of Israel his wonders in Mitzrayim and in the sea by the hand of Moshe and Aaron. And when the children of Israel had entered the sea, the Egyptians came after him, and the waters of the sea resumed upon them, and they all sank in the water. <coughs> <coughs> Go. And not one man was left except Pharaoh, who gave thanks to Hawa. Not one man was left except Pharaoh, who gave all thanks to our framer and shaper, our power. Wow. Wow. And they all, and Pharaoh gave thanks to Hawa and believed in him. Therefore, Hawa did not cause him to perish. He still had mercy at that time with the Mitzrayim. And Hawa ordered all angels to take, ordered an angel or dragon to take him, to, to take him from amongst the Mitzrayim who cast him upon the land of Nineveh and he reigned over it for a long time. He still was able to rock, so whoever the Most High raises up, he really does love. He could have he killed Pharaoh. 
He had love in his heart because he repented. So you look, man, choose up before it's too late, man. The most I got mercy, man. You don't want to just you don't take pride in destroying nothing. Whether you someone calls you a heathen or this, most I don't take pride in destroying nothing if you're choosing up, you know what I mean? If you're in the frequency. Choose the right frequency, man. And uh, from that point, you build your kingdom and you rebuild the kingdom of, of the earth. It's not religious to rebuild the kingdom of the earth, to see the difference between illusion and reality. When you see reality, start to rebuild reality, and reality will fight for you. Rock with reality, rock with wisdom, and wisdom will fight with you. Rock with the earth, the earth will fight with you. Hawa will fight for you. And Hawa ordered an angel, Dragon, to take him from amongst the Egyptians and cast him upon the land of Nineveh. And he reigned over it for a long time. And on that day, Hawa saved Israel from the hand of the Mizraim. And all the children of Israel saw that the Mizraim had perished, and they beheld the great hand of Hawa. And what he had performed in Mizraim and in the sea, they sang, they sang Moshe and the children of Israel this song unto Hawa on the day when Hawa caused the Mizraim to fall before them. So we got the Passover coming up. You know what I mean, obviously, we're just remembering, right? It's, it's you know, we're, we're in a place where it's hard to keep every level of, you know, all our customs, but we're remembering this. This is what we do it for. We, we are remembering the passing over, the crossing over, the harvest season. Let's go, man. This is a harvest flow. This is what happened before is happening now. You're leaving Egypt again, you're getting this frequency. They sang, man, getting the frequency. Most I told you to rejoice. It's time. You're supposed to be happy mama and daddy come home. You ain't supposed to be afraid like everybody else. Get out the mind of a hijack. Verse 43. I'm in chapter 81, verse 43. Then, then sang Moshe and the children of Israel this song unto Hawa on the day Hawa caused Mitzrayim to fall before him. And all of Israel sang, all the Nagas sang in the concert, saying, I will sing to Hawa, for he is greatly exalted. The horse and his rider has he cast into the sea. Behold, it is written in the Sefer of the Torah of Hawa. After this, the children of Israel proceeded on their journey and encamped in Morah. And Hawa gave to the children of Israel commandments and judgments in the place of Marah. And Hawa commanded the children of Israel to walk in his ways and serve him. And they journeyed from Marah and came to Elim. And in Elim were twelve springs of water and seventy date trees. So you have twelve. The uh, ocean of being divided into 12 parts. <laughs> you got the children of Israel crossing the waters in 12 parts. Now you got 12 streams of water. Let's go, man. Ha, wa, da. It's amazing. It, it gets deeper. Let's go. And then they journeyed from Marah and came to Elim, and in Elim were twelve springs of water and seventy date trees, and the children encamped there by the water, and they journeyed from Elim and came to the wilderness of Sain. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure from Mitzrayim, at that time, Hawa gave the manna to the children of Israel to eat, and Hawa caused flood cause food to rain from heaven healing do food to rain from heaven and the children of Israel day by on the children of Israel day by day and the children of Israel ate the manna for 40 years all the days that were in the wilderness until they came to the land of Canaan to possess it so you say what are we gonna eat drop what happens when we break free from this man when it's time when it's when we in that flow how we gonna eat, how our little ones gonna eat. The Most High made the manna rain. He got some more manna just for you. Do you believe or is it just a story? That part's up to you. Remember, order over chaos.
You create your reality. You create it. You are the creative frequency. You create your reality. Surf the wave challenge. And they proceeded from Alush and encamped in Rephidim. And when the children of Israel were Rephidim, Amalek, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, the brother of Sepho, came to fight with Israel. And he brought with him 800 and 1,000 men, magicians, conjurers. They, <laughs> just like the Sparta, uh, the movie 300, they, they brought the magicians to fight. The conjurers to do what? Put spells on Israel the same way they're putting spells on Israel today. And they carried on a great and severe battle against Israel. And Hawa delivered Amalek and his people into the hands of Moshe and the children of Israel. And into the hands of Joshua, the son of Nun, and Ephraim, the servant of Moshe. So, man, these, uh, these magicians and conjurers, you know what I'm saying, from, uh, from, from Amalek, the son of Eliphaz. Eliphaz, the son of Esau, the brother of Sepho. It's a mouthful. They got served up, you know, by Moses. He was delivered into the hands of Joshua. You know, Joshua wasn't on that play play. And the children of Israel smote Amalek and the, his people at the edge of the sword. They are knights. You are knights. Where's your sword? But the battle was very sore upon the children of Israel. And Hawa said to Moshe, write this thing as a memorial for you to, in a sefer, in a sefer, write it in a sefer, write it as a memorial for you in a sefer, and place it at the hand of Joshua, son of Nun, your servant, and you shall command the children of Israel, saying, when you shall come to the land of Canaan, or America, you shall utterly efface, efface the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moshe did so. And he took the sephir and wrote upon it these words saying, Remember what Amalek has done to you in the road when you went forth from Mizraim. He didn't say forgive them. He said, Remember this, man. Remember this, man. Let's go. Let's take it to the dismount. Who met you in the road and smote your rear even those that were feeble behind you when you were faint and weary. Therefore it shall be when Hawa shall have given you rest from all your enemies round about in the land which Hawa gives you for an inheritance, Naga. When Hawa, that Hawa gives you for an inheritance, the land that Hawa gives you as a birthright, Naga, Negro, so-called African-American, this land is your birthright. The land you're walking on is your inheritance. You walking in reality is the difference. You, you being asleep, it's game over. You being awake is the difference. <laughs> Therefore, it shall be when Hawa shall give you rest from all your enemies round about in the land that Hawa gives you for an inheritance to possess it, that you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven and shall not forget it. And the king who shall have pity on Amalek or upon his memory or upon his seed, behold, I will require it of him. That's sealed and deal. You got even pity on Amalek that's your ass. That's how real this tri this is tribal. This doesn't seem like the God that said, oh, you're all my people. <laughs> nah, this is the God that rocks with his tribe. He said, man, you rolled up on my tribe. That's a rap for y'all. Anybody even got a remembrance of y'all, that's a rap for. That's tribal. That's a tribal creator. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not a blase Christian creator. That's a tribal naga. Dragon, creator, fire, water, ether, and land. Dragon flow, Khan flow, priest flow. And Moshe, 
and I will cut him off from the people, man. If you even got a memory of a Amalek, you cut off from the people. And Moshe wrote all these things in the Sefer, and he enjoined the children of Israel respecting all these matters. Oh, man, we're going to leave off there. We're going to leave off on 82, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Much of high, much of high. Shalom. Hope y'all had a wonderful Shabbat, man. Hope y'all can keep joining us in the ETH every day. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, this this flow is for you, man. You know what I mean? This flow is, is for that is for that shofar call, man. I hope y'all kind of, you know what I mean? Even if you never, you know, tried to do one of these feast days, know that this is get down and lay down. You're going to have to, you know, learn to remember these important days. So what we just read is the backstory, a detailed backstory of really what we're going into with this Passat, man, this, this Passover coming up. So I hive to y'all, man, you know what I mean? Just just try to fall back, try to get your unleavened bread on. Chef Candy says she's working on a recipe for that, so dig on that, man. Catch that Zion cooking every Thursday, 7 o'clock Pacific, man. She's also reading that uh, Koba's Code, that new, new world dragon book, man, on uh, her Zion reading on. Well, actually, that's for uh, the, the the live show. And then she got another book she's reading, The King's Fifth. She just finished reading the whole book, King's Fifth, man. So these people are reading till you. Ty Battle just finished reading The Segregation of Israel. She's working on a new book, Our Debt to the Red Man. Uh, Shep Candy's about to pick up Coronado's Expeditions and read the, uh, the uh, Mendoza letters, man. Uh, you know, the whole Mendoza, How We Cool letters. So she's about to start reading the Mendoza letters. You got a tribe that's vibing with you and tribing up, and soon you're going to know how to support us and become Copper Dragon sponsors, Gold Dragon sponsors, Silver Dragon sponsors, and by that way, you know what I'm saying, you're supporting our entire tribe, allowing us to flow, allowing our dreams to flourish of being hijack-free, building our land, buying more land. I love y'all, man. Peace and power to the family, man. The energy. We're bringing it all home to the CUV. We're bringing it all home to reality. I love my tribe. We are always in the ether. And we are always together. This is one drop. Stay up, suit up, and choose up. Drop Nation.